display of state parties is only one, that Kenyans are 11th hour, 12th hour people. We don't work on a long term uh, basis of thinking, where you start planning. Like if you ask what we are going to do at the AU in January uh, 2014 uh, regarding the ICC, nobody knows. Even the media does not know what plan the government has or what the objectives of such a plan are. And it is only three, less than three months away. Yet there is no what you can call a strategic plan to engage that particular bit. Uh, I don't think we should have lost the United Nations vote. I don't think so. We should have lost it through the veto, uh, either by the US, France, or Britain, but not in through abstention as, as it happened. Because I don't, I have, I've, I've checked around to see how what was done to Guatemala, a country that's naturally, naturally uh, predisposed to sympathize with Kenya as a weak uh, underdog country. Uh, South Korea, Korea, the Korea Republic. I think somebody needed to have done that would have given us the nine votes that were required. Not to mention about Argentina, which is more interested with the doing trade with Kenya, exporting things here. I, th I think their meat is finding out its way into our supermarkets and, and related places. So it's, it's a natural ally. And just across the, the Atlantic by one Kenya, Kenya air freight. Uh, and you, you campaign or send somebody. So, but because of time, you did not allocate yourself ample time to prepare for this particular option, then you find that you can't cover the ground sufficiently, mm -hmm. as you've indicated. And talking about diplomatic relationships, I'd like to discuss the implications that have arisen as a result of these ICC cases. Mm. And is it really in Kenya's interest to perhaps shun the Western countries that haven't backed or supported them in these ICC bids and sort of moving towards the East, especially when we consider the portfolio of our exports to imports because we're exporting predominantly mm. to, the, to the West? I, I don't think it is either in Kenya's interest or the West's interest. Uh, th this is really the, the, the dialogue of the deaf. You know, we have to talk, but we refuse to talk. Uh, both Ke Kenya is going, to, is, is going to, of course, lose its traditional uh, business, uh, b uh, economic partners, uh, but more so even security partners. The Kenyan forces, for example, in Somalia are depending largely on the financing and technological, uh, logistical support by the U.S. We don't have, I don't think we have drones uh, to, do, to do that kind of job, but we need to get to the next enemy in the shortest time possible. So there must be coordination between us and the U.S. There must be coordination between us and the, and the British. Uh, the British here yeah, have between 40 to 50,000 people. They're citizens, British uh, bearing passports in the country, and I don't think they, they're, they're going to, to move within a short time. There are very many Kenyans who are here, uh, who have relatives here, and they have others in Britain. When people talk about the cultural and historical linkages, these are real. Uh, some of us are trained in US, UK, and others. We have uh, professional partners from Oxford to other places. Uh, we need those linkages. Um, at the same time, uh, economically, we have, the world has become freer. So Kenya can choose who to, to be a business partner with in what sector. So it is basically uh, the sector of choose. Uh, the Chinese are proving to be a very, very good ally as far as uh, building infrastructure to this country is concerned. And uh, even the West is admitting that uh, uh, the, the kind of uh, infrastructural miracle that is taking part in many parts of Africa, not Kenya alone, is essentially a gift from the East. Uh, but that is one sector. We have others that are very, very, very interwoven military, uh, economic, trade, uh, and so on. Uh, as far as aid is concerned, I am one of those scholars in Africa who say we don't need the aid. Uh, why don't we need the aid? Because uh, give hands out, handouts have never empowered anybody anywhere. What you need is a, a structu structural economic relationship that enable us to be indebted, uh, you get the loan, develop yourself, pay back. That's, that's, that's a good relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, so in, in a sense, uh, diplomatically, I think Kenya and its partners in the, in the West need to go back to the drawing board and look at the consequences of 
of defiance because it looked like defiance on both sides. The, 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 the Americans, the British uh, are saying basically that uh, you, you Kenyans knew what you are choosing. So mm -hmm. face the consequences. Yeah, and just on that note, yeah. actually, we've got a, a message uh, which has come in from one of our viewers, which, is, which says that uh, we are told that the ICC was never a national issue. Uh, fugitives should never be excused from facing their prosecutor by standing for national leadership. Mm. So I guess this brings into question, mm. you know, the issue of justice and, and accountability for what we saw happen with the post-election let, let, let me tell you, uh, we are just being... We are being, being narrow when we're looking at Kenya. Countries everywhere in the world make very bold decisions. If you, if you go back, rewind back now and go to the Biafra war in, uh, in Nigeria, just about 20 or so years ago, the person who the Nigerian called their hero, or Segun Obasaji, who has sat here a number of times, would now be in jail for the 20th year of the 50th uh, sentence, uh, years of sentence, because of what happened. Kwano Juku, with whom he was fighting, so saw a hero in, in Nigeria. C countries across the world, those who read history, had their moments of madness. We had ours in 2007 and 2008. We shouldn't pay with the ultimate price. That's all we, what we have been arguing. America had its moment of madness, the Civil War. And you go to every mountain in the south and everywhere. You, you, li you watch movies uh, about the civil war in America. Uh, and, and somehow people come to terms. South Africa has this moment of madness with apartheid and so on. How many people have been killed and dragged in there? So where do but you draw people, the line? So the line, the line is that it is true. What happened in 2007, 2008 it was not good at all. It was bad for the country. It was a moment of a madness. We've never had another one like that. Um, it is true that the Kenyans knew they were electing people who were indicted by the ICC, right? But they were, to be honest with you, they were not the only people because they could not have been responsible for, for the madness that was in the country around that, just the two, the two of them or three of them. Uh, every Kenyan know that. That's what people are silent about. So we need to go on beyond the justice question and when you come to the scholarship on this question it goes beyond uh, the, the the question of trying and convicting we call that in scholarship retributive aspect of a uh, transitional justice because we are transiting as a country from that moment of madness to a high a degree of sanity and that's what we have done with the new constitution that's what we have done with the reforms that are going on so what we need to begin doing is to think about the implication of the trials at the Hague to the entire transition of the country. And that requires a kind of rethinking by Kenya as a nation and two, by Kenya's partners outside the country, Britain, America, and so on. Because yeah. by, by just changing the two or charging them does not mean that you have need to the problem that okay. was there. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Mitegi, I have a text coming in saying, Mr. Mitegi, why don't you ask questions as usual? Have you got any, any questions to many, ask as we wrap up? The question is only because that, uh, you, 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 you engaged. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, yesterday, mm. you wrote an article in the Sunday yes, Nation yes, yes, about the same. Yes. Talking about uh, re rebelling. Yes. In a gist, what, what were you saying? No, I, I, was sim I was simply You see, what we have done is to do a good analysis of what Kenya is doing you focus on, it's Kenya-centric. I wanted Kenyans basically to begin asking what is the other part of the, of, of the world up to? In other words, what are their strategies? Kenya's strategy has to, as I have said, is to use the law and to use politics as the two pillars within which to resolve the ICC issue. Now, but what uh, is the West thinking about Kenya? Uh, why does the West think that uh, what is happening in Kenya is a rebellion. What is Kenya rebelling against? And is this a Kenyan rebellion or is it an African rebellion? What implication does it have for the global uh, uh, justice structure? That, that's basically what I was up to. There okay. are some people who have argued that uh, the president and his deputy mm. are using the state to shield themselves out of a problem which is, they said, is personal. 
It is not the state that is shielding them. Remember, they deliberately, deliberately turned the ICC issue into a referendum yeah. and told Kenyans, if you chose us, that's okay. If you vote against us, it's okay. So if they, if they, vote, they lost, we would not be having this debate because we'd be talking about the normal part of what, happens, what has happened in the post-war world order after 1945. It is what we call the victor's justice. And since they would have lost, they would have faced what, they, what the rest of the, the losers have done. They would now be at the Hague. The state would be complying. Uh, and everything that needs to be done would be going on. Now, what is making it difficult is that uh, that logic of the victor's justice does not work because the Kenyans knowingly voted them in. So, and in, in, in law, there is something called fundamental change of circumstances. That is what uh, is bringing about all this because uh, the West and others have refused to ac acknowledge that there are fundamental change of circumstances. Because when you are an individual indicted, that's a different circumstance. When you are a sworn and inaugurated head of state, it is no longer an individual matter. And I know the president has argued this is my personal problem. Uh, they, they, everybody is arguing this is a personal problem. I don't believe so as a Kenyan. As a Kenyan, I don't believe so because if you voted democratically, and Kenya is not the only one, the only country that has done that before. Kutwad him. Who was the, I think the... Forgive me for interrupting. We are running out of time. Ah, so if I could have you to have your final comments as we wrap up the interview. The, the, the final comment, I think, is that uh, we need to go both uh, Kenya and, and its partners need to go back to the drawing board and begin to understand what impact this one is going to have on the relation, on a historical relationship uh, between two partners for the last 50 years. And that might mean us revisiting the whole question of transitional justice. Uh, and transitional justice meaning we just don't go to retribution, we also begin to address the restorative aspect because we need to restore a nation that has been having issues since 2005 referendum. Okay, all right. Well, thank you very much, you. Mr. Kagwanja, for coming to studio and, and just sharing your views on the ICC issue. I think it's been very enlightening uh, to, to hear that as we wait for the decision which will happen on Wednesday. So thank you very thank much you for too. being here. It's